We're joined by Batya Unger Sargon. She is an opinion editor at Newsweek, has a new book out, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. Uh, Batya, this is fortunate. It's one of those times where the title itself gets a whole lot of conversation started, I think, because people recognize that something's gone on. I mean, I could talk just about the elite selling out to uh, China and what that's done to American manufacturing and, and workers. But let's let's let you lead us first here. Where should we start? How and why have the elites betrayed America's working men and women? Well, thank you guys so much for having me. It's really thrilling to be here with you. Um, I'm. It's music to my ears to hear you say that because I really wanted this book to be a conversation starter. Um, there's so much in it that I think feels incredibly intuitive, especially to working class people or people like you guys whose lives are not totally separate from working class people the way that many in the elites are. Um, it's so obvious that life has become incredibly difficult for the hardest working Americans. So I really wanted to explain how that happened and why that happened and how we fix it. And so I traveled around the country for a year interviewing working class people from all political persuasions, all races, lots of different industries to get their thoughts on whether they think they still have a fair shot at the American dream um, and really how we could increase their shot at the American dream. And I heard a lot of them talking about how betrayed they feel by the elites. And by the way, by the elites, they don't mean billionaires. Um, a lot of them admire billionaires. They see billionaires as jobs, jobs creators. By the elites, they mean that sort of credentialed college, overeducated elite in the top 20% in professional managerial jobs who really over the course of the last 40 years have been engaged in a plunder of the middle class, an upward transfer of wealth of middle class wages into their own pockets are you optimistic that things are going to get better for people who are out there working on a day-to-day -day basis i mean when you look at inflation which has taken a huge bite out of their paychecks uh and all of our paychecks but in particular when you live paycheck to paycheck it has far more of an impact are you optimistic that the general trend lines can be in their favor or do you think things are perpetually aligned against them I'm really curious what you guys think about this. I feel totally optimistic. Um, I'll tell you why. We don't remember this, but when Trump came into office, there was a handshake agreement between the two parties that we should have free trade with China. I mean, that was the orthodoxy that governed the Democrats and the Republicans at the time. And Trump showed up and just took an ax to that neoliberal order and said, we're not going to have free trade with China. We're going to have a trade war. And he put these tariffs on steel and aluminum, put tariffs on other things, really tried to right that trade deficit that we had. Um, and now he was so successful that President Biden has been unable to undo all of that work and has actually kept a lot of those tariffs. So if you think about how the ship was totally going in one direction and one man could show up with the mandate given to him by his voters and totally turn that around, so much so that his enemy, who undid every other good thing he did, could not undo it. I mean, that makes me feel so optimistic. I mean, on immigration, again, like it was in the 90s, it was the Democrats who wanted to control the border because they wanted to protect working class wages. And it was the Republicans who wanted to give amnesty to all of these people. Now there really is a consensus among working Americans that immigration has gone off the charts too much and that we really need to stop this. And by the way, that's liberals and conservative working class people. I just want to note, uh, Batia, and I think this is so important, Trump's victory on the trade issue came not only against the Democrat opposition to him, they just hate anything that Trump does, but even Republicans were initially very critical, and he broke with the D.C. consensus, you could say the swamp consensus, on on trade. And the people that I know who really study trade, like the, the trade nerds out there, um, I would have them on and talk to them, and they would point out, we were already in a trade war. It was just a one-way trade war, <laughs> as in China was waging a trade war against us, and we were saying, well, let's just keep promoting free trade. And it was uh, it was an absurdity, and Trump came and stopped that. And I appreciate that you, make note, you get into that in your book, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. That's the book by Batya Unger-Sargon. You mentioned the immigration issue. Uh, this is one I is one of the, I think, most fascinating and honestly most important issues in America today and has been for many years. There's more focus on it now than there has been in a while. But let's break down some of 
what it really means. I mean, you mentioned protecting wages. Um, what does it mean for the cost of a house? What does it mean for wages to have not just a lot of mass immigration in general, but now millions upon millions, 8 million is probably the number for Biden's first term coming into the country illegally? Yeah, it's a really, really important issue. Um, the way that I think about it is like this. You know, first they shipped good paying manufacturing jobs overseas to build up China and Mexico's middle class, right? They took these great jobs, five million of them, and just handed them off to our enemies. And then President Obama defunded vocational training, cutting off another avenue to the American dream for working class people. And then they invited in millions and millions and millions of illegal immigrants over the course of the last 50 years, but really, like you said, over the last four years, turbocharged to undercut further the jobs that remained here. It is so crazy to remember that meatpacking jobs, those used to be the job to have. They were great wages, great benefits, um, you know, great protections for workers. All of that is gone. It is now they employ tons and tons of illegal immigrants, which means that it drives down the wages. There are no more protections for workers, no more benefits. So they then devalued the jobs that remained here. And if you objected to that as a working class person who was trying to understand why is it that my parents were able to support my family and buy a home on a single income and I'm working two or three jobs and I can't support my children, you're trying to struggling to understand that and you call it out, you get called a racist and smeared as a racist. That is the move that the leftist elites do to mask their plunder of the working class and the middle class, which put money in their pockets, because of course, they are the people who employ these illegal immigrants. So when they open that border and flood the, these these industries, whether it's cleaning or landscaping or meatpacking or healthcare at the lower end of that, they flood it with illegal workers. Everything's cheaper for them, right? They don't have to pay what they would have paid an American worker. And, you know, the proof proof that this is intentional is listen to DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas every time he is asked about the border. And I mean every time. He did it again three days ago on Fox News. He's done it every time he's been before Congress or the Senate. When he is asked about the border, what does he say? He says, our corporations have jobs they can't fill. He thinks his job is not to secure the border, but to partner with these murderous cartels in supplying American corporations with cheap labor. But yeah, based on your travels, we got Trump having his rally in the South Bronx here in a few hours. The data out there is reflecting that in particular for men, but also for women, but men out there, wage earners, black, white, Asian, and Hispanic are overwhelmingly moving towards Trump. Does that surprise you? Do you think the Republican Party actually has way more support among minority voters out there that are wage earners than maybe they've realized historically? I wouldn't say it's the Republican Party because I found in my travels that, you know, there's one thing working class conservatives hate more than the Democratic Party, and it's the Republican Party. They really hate the GOP as it was embodied by someone like Nikki Haley, the kind of free trade, um, foreign entanglements, foreign wars version of the party, the Chamber of Commerce version. They are defecting from the Democratic Party for Trump. Uh, he's he's really running like a third party candidate um, is, is what he's done. And, and as an incumbent, because he has that record. And I'll tell you something funny. When I was reporting my book, I was traveling around the country interviewing working class people in you know, many different communities. Um, I didn't find a single black man who was planning to vote for Biden. And I said to myself, girl, something's off. Like your 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 selection bias is off. Like your your you know, hand picking people, cherry picking. It wasn't until, you know, a year later that I started to see the polling where he was really surging with black men who feel totally sold out by the kind of feminized version of the Democratic Party that puts a total premium on a college education, that welcomed in millions and millions of people to compete for that with them for working class jobs and sold out their future. The book no by Batia Unger Sargon is fantastic. Highly recommend you get a copy. Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. Batia, that was really fascinating. Please come back soon. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Going to be interesting to see the numbers that support uh, the, the arguments that she's making there, whether they truly translate in 2024. If they do, I think it is going to be 
a seismic shift in the way that politics are talked about in this country in a very good way. Uh, we just talked about the challenges with all the expenses and all the responsibilities of being a homeowner in America based on what you can earn in so many different jobs. Got a yard full of trees. You've likely had rain gutter cleaning dilemma. I keep talking about this. I just went downstairs. My boys are getting out of school today. Yes, summer starts now in the Travis household. And you know what one of my sons already doing? He's in the backyard practicing his wiffle ball pitching. He's going to go play wiffle ball with some of his buddies today. He's working on his wiffle ball, making the, 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 the ball move correctly so he can get a strikeout. And also, that means there's going to be more wiffle balls in my gutters, which is what I inevitably have to be pulling out. Foul balls going right back into the gutter of the Travis household. And as a result, everything gets piled up. Leaves also. Water, we have big storms like we do frequently during the spring. And the summer, it comes pouring over, sometimes coming out where the gutters are not. And... You need to protect your home and never clean out your gutters with leaf filter. I've got them coming to my house. They'll come to your house as well. You can get a free inspection, 20% off the entire purchase at leaffilter.com slash clay and buck. Also, an additional 10% off if you're a senior or military uh, discount. That means up to 30% off leaffilter.com slash clay and buck. That website, L E A F. Filter.com slash Clay and Buck. Get hooked up today, up to 30% off, just in time for spring and summer. LeafFilter.com, Clay and Buck.